That's a pity. Yeah. Let's see if it shows up. No, nope, nothing. No, nope, I haven't got a notice. Oh, hey, then we get Facebook. Hey, guys and gals, we are at the, yes, is a no Sorry, side of the difficulties. aisle. The YouTube side of the aisle. There we go. All, All right. right. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. So, hey, yes. now YouTube is here on YouTube the left side of the aisle. Here. We have YouTube. Right side of the aisle, we have Facebook. So, Is that supposed to be a political yeah, comment? A political thing. Is yeah. there really an aisle between the, the... Did they really do that? I, th I think there is an aisle. In, How childish is that? But I don't know if they <laughs> put like, them on both sides. Yeah, we I don't really think they separate them like the bride and the groom <laughs> side of a wedding. No, no, really. But they call it, you know, the left side. People don't know. Left side of the aisle, right side... Or, Different aisles, you know, you have like so one party. I think so what do they make like if you're an independent aisles. you gotta like sit downstairs or something? I don't know. <laughs> Too yeah, much probably. nobody cares. Nobody cares. We are here to talk about Vega, all the news. Again, YouTube you didn't hear this. Facebook works more reliably. <laughs> um <laughs> We're here to talk about uh, Vega because there's just so much we want to talk about it now because we won't remember what it is two weeks from now. And we are gonna talk about that cheap thread ripper part. Some people don't understand what it is, and I was right, by the way. Nice. So, uh, that's the whole reason you. we're shooting the show. Because so Gordon came on. Yes. Right? He's, he's like, finally, I got oh, one right. Right, right about right. something. <laughs> finally. Uh, e. Lopez is here from uh, Massachusetts. All right. That's how I pronounce it. Massachusetts. Hello, Massachusetts. East Coast. Yeah. How's the future? All right. Future's great. All right. I'm in we're going to start Hampshire, losing nice people. Neighbor. Oh, and, and Matthew from the, the UK, the United of Kingdom. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Uh, all right. Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna okay, we're gonna do the opener, then we're okay, stand by. Mm. We're gonna because I'm not gonna screw this up. So stand by. Obviously, I'm working on four hours of sleep. In this episode, uh, <laughs> see, yeah, first time. <laughs> In this episode of the Full Nerd, Vega finally arrives and a cheap thread ripper. Ooh, Elton from Brazil's here. Wait, I thought you were supposed to talk during this stuff. Okay, so we're talking then. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah, welcome to the Full Nerd episode 28. I was going to call it 27A because we just talked about this on Friday, but by Monday the situation has changed. We recorded this on July 31st, 2017. I'm Gordon Maung with co-host Brad Charkas. Told you I'd be back in my box. <laughs> Elena Yi is back from her leave for <laughs> fighting in her cat fight. I'm going to mention that later. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And controlling the vertical and horizontal is Adam Patrick Murray. Hey, we're back. You're 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 making me uh, really work for my uh, my paycheck by doing two episodes and two working days. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> see, the best things we just come in here. They don't know what we're doing. No, they don't. We just have Brad. You got to monitor, make sure John's not watching. Our boss is. Gonna <laughs> so, uh, big news, of course, is Vega. Vega finally arrived. They unveiled it last night at seven thirty. I am running on four hours of sleep. I was in Los Angeles where they briefed everybody and stuff. Brad, though, probably actually knows more than I do because at a certain point, I just everything got lost in a haze. You wanna? <laughs> Do you want to take this or you want me to? If I'm sure I'm going to screw this up. I can toss out the hard specs at least and we can start chatting about it. Uh, so basically, there are three versions of Vega coming out. Um, it starts at 400 bucks for the RX Vega 56, which refers to the amount of compute units it has in there because those are kind of weird names. Vega 56, <laughs> what does that mean? It refers to the compute units. Um, it's basically... Like a higher clock fury under the hood. It has 3,584 stream processors. It has 8 gigabytes of HBM2 RAM mm. with uh, 410 gigabytes of bandwidth. And it runs at 1,156 millihertz base clock. And it goes up to 1.4 gigahertz boost clock. So, you know, pretty decent. Um, so at that price point, you'd probably expect it to go up against, say, the 1070. Um, stepping up. You have the $500 Radeon RX Vega 64, which is Big Vega, and it's called Vega 64 because it has 64 compute units. It also has 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, and it starts at a 1,247 megahertz base clock with a boost up to 1.5 gigahertz. 1.546 megahertz, actually. Uh, so that those are both using blower style coolers like you'd expect on a reference card. Uh, there will be a special limited edition silver Vega 64 for the initial buyers. There will also be a Vega 64 liquid cooled edition that has all the same basic specs as the Vega 64 air cooled edition. But because of the liquid cooling, it'll have higher clocks 
it'll start at 1.4 megahertz and boost up to almost 1.7 gigahertz uh, boost, which is, you know, about a uh, hundred megahertz higher than the Vega Frontier Edition water cooled. Every time you say Vega 64, I just think it's like a Nintendo 64 emulator. Uh, it's funny because you say that, and in my head I hear Vega, like Sega. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was like a Vega Mega thing they were kind of pushing. But, uh, you know, I, I, and the other thing is, like, so Brad, so you gave the prices of the, it's $399, $499, $399 for the 56 Four ninety nine for the sixty four, but I, I'm I'm gonna. Did you bring up the prices of the other other? I did parts? not because it gets complicated there with the liquid cool and stuff. Yeah, and actually, this is the this is the part that that threw me. And I, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna bring this up because I swear I think I tried to spend three hours trying to understand this on Saturday. <laughs> so AMD is basically introducing what they're calling Radeon packs, and you you go out, you go and buy say the liquid cooled version. Uh, where's the price on these? All right, so the liquid cooled version. You can't buy it standalone. Yes, you can. Ish. Hmm. Ish. So ish. That's the word. So well, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna present it the way it was presented to me. And um, so we have our Radeon Black Pack. You get the RX 64 Vega, our RX Vega 64 599, and that gives you access to a $200 discount on a really nice 34 inch curved Samsung display. A uh, hundred bucks off the price of a Ryzen seven and uh, AM four motherboard combo and two games. So that's five ninety. The two games are Prey and Wolfenstein: The New Colossus. By the way. Oh, okay. Is that actually because I'm there was some yeah. concern like oh these are not this the value of this is not as much as because AMD says that's about one hundred twenty bucks worth of games. Eh, that no. that is that I is mean, roughly. sticker price. Yeah, mm, okay. we pay sixty for each of them. Yeah. Okay. And then wait the so uh, the Aqua Pack nets you the liquid cooled version of the Vega six ninety nine and then same deal, um, so the confusing part though which really just here's the so quick question yeah. do you get the games regardless if if you buy anything else yeah so basically the 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 packs if if I am not screwing this up and really I just it was like they were talking to a dog right at some point with me <laughs> I've spent the morning reading it up too so I'll fill in after oh, okay but you you buy the card basically the aqua the liquid version is 699 you get two games when you buy it you can buy the monitor and and CPU you did don't have to buy it but like if you go to a, a, a store you add the liquid cooled version, and then you go to hey, you can also buy this Samsung monitor monitor for two hundred bucks off, and then you can also buy this, you know, uh, Ryzen CPU for. So you can't wait. It's not like a coupon. You have to do it all at the you same time. Got to do it at the same time, but Ooh. you don't have to do it. Right, but you, it's I, it's an either or choice. It's not like oh, I have that option for that later on if I right. want to upgrade the rest of my rig. Right, and just oh, so sucks. people know, that monitor is really nice, but it's. It's like a the list price is I think nine hundred fifty bucks on the thing. Yep, and if you look at the uh, the Ryzen and combo packs, it's actually pretty limited in which ones you can pick up. It's the seventeen hundred X or eighteen hundred X, and only three like super high end X three seventy motherboards. Yeah, it's a it's a so. certain combo, right? So. Yeah, so they're they're pitching them as like uh, discount packs, which it is if you're going to buy into all that anyway. But what it really is, is you say, okay, hey, I'm going to spend 100 extra dollars on this graphics card. So the suggested retail price for the Vega 64 is $499. To get the, the pack going, you got to say, okay, I'm going to buy that for $599, the pack edition. And then you get the two free games. And then if you want, then you can get the discounts on these other things. Right. So, and they're free games because you're spending an extra 100 bucks to get 120 bucks worth of games and some coupons. So, right. So skip that and just wait for a Steam sale if you're not planning to upgrade your rig then. <laughs> well, so it's interesting to me. Yeah. To me, they, they said that they're doing it to combat miners, right? So the interesting part to me about all this is with, you know, you got you kind of got to worry about availability at this point because it didn't take so long to come out. HBM2 is so new. Right. My concern, and we're going to have to wait and see how it goes, is how they proportion it between how many are available at standard price and how many they designate for pack additions or whatever. Because right. it could be like the Founders Edition where there's you got to pay extra to actually get it. But I, I, so they, 
they definitely are very concerned about gamers getting to these cards, which is, I think, interesting because most people on the outside go like, holy smokes, uh, RX 580 is going for $650? That's great for AMD, right? And AMD is like, no, we don't get any of that. That's just going to somebody else. We don't, we sell the, we sell the chip or we sell a reference board to somebody. They slap their sticker on it. They're making gravy, which is good for their partners, but for actually AMD's bottom line, not great. And actually, the interesting thing is looking back at the previous you know, mining craze back when you could not get an R9 for, I felt like two years, right? You just could not get an R9 card. Gamers have said, okay, I'm going to buy an NVIDIA card. Well, you know what? Those people, they may not come back to Radeon next time. So it really damaged the brand. The last time it really did hurt AMD, a lot of the miners, because there was just no cards for gamers. So you don't get mine. Sure, people aren't using your cards. People aren't excited about it. So basically, yeah, you're great with miners, but you give up the gaming crowd, which is AMD's bread and butter. They say it's very important, and that's why they're doing these packs. So, but these so, these, packs, uh, <clears throat> these packs are all well and good, uh, but there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions in chat about <laughs> yeah. performance, power, all this sort of stuff. Uh, and yeah, what, what do you say we move on, or is, did you have a one last point? Later? No, I I I think so. One that one thing I do want to, to mention, of course, you get you get the so the the base RX Vega sixty four. I don't know if we mentioned the limited edition version. I so I'm, I've, I've mentioned it briefly. The first buyers get a, a fancy aluminum one, right? So you get that. It's basically the exact same GPU, same guts, everything. There's really no, there's no performance difference. The same card, but you get the really cool aluminum shell. Um, we tried to get AMD to tell us, uh, is this going to be like ten or a hundred or a thousand? They're like, look, you know, they're saying it's not chintzy. So basically, they're saying if you are an early buyer of probably the pack, you will get the cool aluminum shroud just i just want to get that out there because people do want to know like well you know how many of these there's only a few hundred or something like that so i get the feeling yeah they made plenty so it is a really nice looking card but yeah let's let's get into the thing that people care about right one one thing that just oh. uh before we get into the performance and stuff just to finish one more tie over the weekend um linus linus tech tips had their convention and they had the first unboxing of an rx vega and it came with like this mysterious like radeon hollow cube device like a black cube with cool red things in it everyone's like hey what's that that's you know part of the unboxing that came with it then everyone's interest was peaked and a and b followed up and said that's just a prototype you're not actually going to get that in the box at this point so don't expect that in the box with these cards right so if you heard about that don't expect that heartbreak did they actually show it running because it has a little stuff moving right it's really it's mm. really awesome of course i was really sad because they're not selling it so <laughs> and the whole idea is you can take it out of the box and plug it into your machine right so i'm not sure if they went into too many details about it okay then i'm telling stuff i'm not supposed to tell them sorry <laughs> <laughs> well <clears throat> we have somebody uh in the chat we've got uh plenty of people i'll just, just G gtr dash one root ham don't know what that means. Yeah, what's up with the high TDP? Yes. Gordon, yeah. let's get into that. Because that seems to be a hot topic. It is a hot topic. And uh, honestly, uh, you know, so a lot of the messaging from AMD was, look, we have we have better performance per watt than Polaris and, and previous generations. And, you know, we have chill and all this stuff. But, yeah, these TDP numbers are not great. Did you mention the TDPs? I don't know if you did or I not. I did not. not so yet. I'm gonna, I got them right in front of me. Radeon 56, the bottom end one, 210 watt total board power. So not just a, the, 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 the die and the memory itself. Radeon Vega 64, Radeon RX Vega 64, 295 watts. <laughs> and the liquid cooled one, which is, of course, at, you know, overclocked. And you also have to drive the pumps and everything on there, too. 345 watt board TDP. So they seem to be really cranking it past the efficiency curve in order to hit higher numbers. Right. It seems like at a glance. Do you think that's a problem there, Brad? Um, we won't know until we know final performance. I mean, it'll all still depend, but that's, you know, it's been what? 14 months. I mean, uh, the GTX 1080 launched last May, and right. they said this is going to, you know, trade blows with the GTX 1080, and that's significantly less wattage use. So, right. What's the TDP of a 1080 these days? 165 or 180? Yeah, 180 for the reference version. I mean, the add on board versions will obviously use more, but that'd be the same case with Vega, I would expect. Right. So 180 watts versus, of course, the Radeon 64 in this case is 295 watts. That seems like a lot of, lot of power. 
Um, yeah, I think there is concern. There's definitely a concern, uh, you know, because the coolest thing about going down to these uh, tech conferences, you know, tech days where they brief the media is you're just hanging out with just the smartest people in the room from all other websites. Um, and everybody that was the buzz is like, what is up with these numbers? Right. I mean, that 290 for 295 watts is more than a 290 X. Right. Wasn't that a 290 watt board? The 290 X R9 299X. I don't know offhand. Every, it, was, it was high like that, though. Yeah, I think the, I, it was even that high. I it was pretty high, and um, that two ninety. The three ninety. I have really one, and my PSU isn't that big. So is it try. a two ninety or two ninety X? I have a two ninety X. Yeah, the two ninety X though. If you really run that thing, it will just it starts to scream. So there's there's concern over the noise it'll make. And um, the heat that was a thing with two ninety X. Yeah. So uh, uh, Adam Kinder sixty seven on uh, YouTube is saying, are people really going to spend seven hundred dollars on a video card and worry about an extra couple light bulbs running? Yes. And I am with him because I'm the same way because I I don't know what it is with. Look, I understand efficiency. It's great in a laptop. It's it's great in a phone. But like for me, I'm and I'm with you. I'm to, I totally agree because I'm sitting in a machine. I've got a I've got an eight or ten or twelve core CPU, thirty two or sixty four gigs of RAM, four hard drives and two M dot two drives, and I'm worried about I don't know sixty watts on my video card. Then you know, or eighty. Well, in this case, one hundred and ten, I think. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, I don't think it's a prime buying consideration unless you're in an area of the world where you're paying through the nodes for electricity. But I still think it's a viable data point. Like all things, if all other things are equal, you would go for the one that uses far less power. Sure. I mean, performance, it, it definitely is a valid, it is a valid point. I'm not saying we should ignore it, but I, you know, to me, it's sort of like, it's like you go out and you buy a V10 Viper. Oh, oh my God, that's so dated. If you go out and you buy, <laughs> if you go out and you buy a Corvette and you drive and you, you're complaining about your gas mileage. It's just like you bought a Corvette. What do you want? You want to run this thing flat out. You didn't buy. You go out and buy a Prius. You want good gas mileage? Go buy a Prius. <laughs> you bought a Corvette. So what are you? What are you crying about? Right? And you know, of course, it's the world has changed now. But it used to be that was actually a cool feature because remember when it was like, oh, it's awesome to have a 1600 watt power supply, you know, and three video cards or something. But that has changed. So. Well, uh, a couple people in the chat are saying uh, it's not just that. Uh, it's also about heat. Uh, yes. Matthew Hayes, yeah. says T yes. Matthew Hayes says TDP does not equal p uh, power draw. It's heat waste. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's both, right? I mean, they're, they're so tied. But yeah, I mean, that is concern. And actually, to me, it's not even the heat. I'm not really bothered by the heat. I'm, I'm bothered by the acoustics, right? Well, I mean, it's a little both, though. Well, that's I mean, related, if you're, too. If you're living, but if you're living in a place in the world where you don't have air conditioning or it just gets hotter than Hades, it's a valid concern you, about ambient you can temperature. Say hell on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to vary my vocabulary. Um, oh, also, by the way, you were right about the 290. Uh, oh, was it? Draw. Yeah, so 290, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we were all like, wait, isn't that? And then everybody's like, well, how much was the 295X2? So, was that? This like is was is this wasn't the two ninety five X two a three hundred fifty watt board? I don't remember offhand. It was a lot. It's still my favorite board. <laughs> like it's just like I was saying. I saw Gordon last week in San Francisco. I'm like I still love the two ninety five X two because it's just like a big over the top. Here, this is it. We're kicking down the doors and getting performance. So we don't care if you have to have a twelve hundred watt power supply. And I actually enjoyed that. You should run two of them, Brad. Take the one from San Francisco and run both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking it up so, now, but of course our so the the, the two ninety x point actually raises an interesting thought that I had in my head looking at all this, because a lot of people on the internet are saying, hey, you know, why would you buy this over ten eighty? And one, we don't know yet because we don't have final reviews. Uh, and they did say that stuff like uh, the draw stream binning rasterizer and some of their power savings hardware hasn't been activated in the. Vega Frontier Edition, so there is still some performance uplift there for final reviews for the gaming card. There could be. But what this makes me think of is that like, if you're already invested in the AMD ecosystem, you have a 290X, you have a 390X, whatever, and you have a FreeSync monitor already, and you want to drive that FreeSync monitor at higher frames, this would be good for that, right? And with mining prices being so ridiculous right now, you could resell that old 290X or 390X get a pretty good price for it, swap it over to one of these and only be out a hundred or 200 bucks. True. Uh, and I actually, I want to, I, I just, I looked up the, the 290, um, 295X2 TDP, uh, story from Tom's hardware. 2014 says 450 watt TDP is what, um, 
<laughs> Andy said, so no, this is like, what? <laughs> 345, that ain't nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested to see if the Vega 64, it's rated for up to 1.546 megahertz. So I'm interested to see if it actually manages to hit that. Because in the uh, reviews that went up, the gaming reviews of the Vega Frontier Edition, which again was not a gaming card, um, it was only able to hit 1.44 megahertz reliably. So about 100 megahertz less than what the top rated is here. Right. I'm interested to see if the gaming card with the blower style cooler can actually hit that top speed. Yeah, but I mean, it is a different beast, right? So, yeah, that that, that was not, that's not a gaming card at all. Um, I, I gotta say though, the shroud, the the, the blue, still I think superior to the, uh, the RX yeah. Vega. Yeah, I, I do like that blue. One? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I'm actually sort of disappointed they didn't do it in red. I think it should have mm, been a red shroud. That'd be pretty then, good. You know, that'd been pretty. Uh, so uh, or earlier, E Lopez five eighty uh, was asking, uh, have they announced the teraflops with the Vega cards? Uh, yeah, uh, I have in front of me, or Brad does too. I don't know if you want to, you want to do. Brad. Sure, the uh, Vega fifty six is ten point five teraflops. The Vega sixty four is twelve point six six teraflops, and the liquid cooled Vega sixty four is thirteen point seven teraflops. And one thing that we didn't mention. While we were going through all these, because they didn't give any information about it, but they showed it off at the Capsaicin event last night, is there's apparently going to be a Vega Nano as well. They didn't give any information about it, aside oh. from holding it up. It's real small. They said, hey, here it is, and handed it to Tim, Tim Sweeney from Epic, which is funny <laughs> because that's what uh, NVIDIA did when it launched the Titan X. So I thought that was funny. A little <laughs> nod to the past. Wow, that's pretty cool. Can you imagine being Tim Sweeney? People calling on stage just to give you hardware. But the question is, does he get to keep it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, They're like, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, we're going to need that prop. back. Please yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really interested in that because the, the Nano, I thought, was one of the most interesting cards in recent times. How small it was. It could fit into so many things. I'm glad to see they're bringing it back. Do you think it's just basically a reduced uh, Vega 56, you would think? I mean, because that's, I can't imagine them doing a 295 watt card down that tiny row. What were the Nanos like before? Uh, I don't have them offhand. Uh, <laughs> Do you, so, I, uh, you keep yeah. asking me all these questions, Gordon. I don't have the numbers. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, first, everybody's it's got a case day. of the moon days. <laughs> the original Nano was the full-fledged Fiji GPU but just severely power and thermal restrained. So it couldn't ramp up anywhere near as high as the Fury X, but it was still the same raw silicon. So do you, are you feeling like, because a lot of people lost yesterday were like, this is kind of feeling a little bit like Fiji a little bit. You know, these things are just seem like they're a lot more power consumption than they expected, you know, mm -hmm. and the perform. I think somebody's saying, you know, Fiji, so their official talking about performance AMD says yeah this will this will trade blows with a 1080 right so they're sort of expecting And they were playing up the minimum frame times too right Yeah and that's you know kind of the cool um side effect of the they were saying you know the the HB the HBCC the high bandwidth you know cache mm -hmm. um and then also the HBM right which is sort of basically the same thing you know you just you just they just have you know, you're looking at almost what, half a terabyte of a memory bandwidth. It helps with those those hitches and stutters, right? So, but yeah, they're definitely minimum frame rates. But for the most part, it was close to a 1080. And that was for for people to know they that was the basic Radeon 64 air cooled. That wasn't the, the liquid cooled one. So, uh, you said the word Fiji and Psy perked up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, the, there's a lot of people wondering about a uh, how come they didn't announce a four gig. Vega RX Vega version, or do you think that uh, starts to cut too low? Four gig is too little for the the markets that these are targeting at this point. At this point, they're like with the 1070 and the 1080 com competitors are what these are looking to be. And once you're getting up to high frame rate 1440p and 4K, uh, it's better to have the higher amount. Because if you look at the old Fury cards, there's already times where the four gigabyte buffer is starting to be a little bit of an issue. So. Not surprised they didn't go with four gigabytes on any of these. Yeah, yeah, not a three ninety nine right now. I don't think anybody's going to pay four hundred bucks for a. Well, speaking of price, you know, we we did uh, give predictions on price last time, right? On Vega? Oh yeah, yeah. Huh. did we? Oh, We've yeah. done so many of well, these now. You, I've lost track. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what what do we guess, Adam? I, I think Brad went down to uh, to four fifty, right? I mean that kind I of said, makes everybody sort of right because there's different skews. Yeah, yeah. We we didn't yeah. we didn't. No, really but go we were talking that. about 
the top end part. We're top saying, end, yeah. Well, I mean, liquid the, cooled or the no. air cooled? Well, yeah, we, we, we picked what would it for be for Vega. Well, yeah, what would it be for air cooled and what would it be for liquid cooled at the top mm-hmm. end? So mm-hmm. what are we saying? Yeah, uh, I, I can't remember. I, I think you said I think you said five hundred and six hundred. Oh, I sorry, I, what? Yeah, I uh-huh. think you said five hundred and six hundred. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and I think Brad said four fifty and five fifty. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm almost fifty bucks off on everything basically. Yeah. <laughs> And then Elena, I think you said five hundred and five fifty. I think so. Yeah, for something liquid? like that. Yeah, yeah you're saying. 50 I way undercut that. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm bad at that. <laughs> That's why I'm going to be really interested to see how these perform. Because if the Vega fifty six does perform in the ballpark of a ten seventy at four hundred bucks, then the ten seventy, assuming you could buy them, which is part of the reason I think that they were able to price where they're at with these cards because of miners. Um, the GTX 1070 is already 380, so this is already more expensive than the MSRP of the 1070. So if it's right in the same ballpark, that'd be kind of interesting, I think. But the 1070 is about a $500 card now, I thought, right? Because of the mining credit? Yeah, well, it is now because all the miners. Yeah. I also wonder if they're going with that just because they're trying to sell that whole angle of the ecosystem, right? So, yeah, it's maybe a smidge more expensive to get the card versus the 1070, but hey, you can get a free sync monitor for heck of a lot cheaper than a g-sync monitor if you want to yeah but then then they're selling the uh, that gets me i don't (laughs) i I don't value proposition i don't but the one that they're giving the budget on is like one of the most expensive ones you can buy yeah it's a it's a it's a 900 no i don't mean i don't i don't mean the bundles exactly i agree with you on that point (laughs) i'm talking about just in general if you wanted to go out and get a free sync monitor like just a 23 inch, you know, decent free sync monitor. You can do that for like under 200 now. Yeah, actually, and one of the, because they were pushing that heavy. They're like, look, you can get a free sync panel. There's their, you know, their number is 200, more than 200. And I think somebody was saying it's actually about 230. They're saying you can get a free sync panel under, uh, for about 100 bucks now. So. Yeah, it depends on the size. It's not going to be the greatest, I'm sure, but yeah, it depends on the size. And the resolution. I don't the, know what the, the cheapest G-Sync panel is. are getting pretty cheap now. Yeah. I haven't looked at G-Sync panels, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're not. G-Sync that. panels have not dropped to those prices. <laughs> that, that wound up being the focus of their. You remember a, a couple full of nerds ago, we were talking about how they were having gamer events before the official launch in Budapest and Portland, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, the whole point of it turned out to be a blind taste test. Like, here's this one with Vega and an unnamed FreeSync monitor. And here's one that's a GeForce and an unnamed G-Sync monitor. And one of them's $300 less in total. Huh. Can you tell the difference? Huh. So it, that seems to be what they're pushing for that, the ecosystem. So do people choose Pepsi or Coke? <laughs> <laughs> they say that the majority picked the Vega system. Huh. Hmm. Well, I would hope, I would <laughs> hope like, they would oh, say that. Crap. Why did we do that? <laughs> Damn it. Nobody picked ours. Uh, Ruru2 uh, on YouTube is asking, uh, do we know anything about the Vega partner cards coming out? Those, so these are basically reference cards, um, and they, the partner cards, they didn't mention timing, but I'm going to guess, you know, soon. Um, one thing I didn't get into, Brad didn't get into, is the power uh, plugs. So we, wait, we, wait, 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 oh, wait, oh, wait. Just, oh. before you move on from partner cards, I thought it was interesting. All the ones, like all the big players revealed cards yesterday, and they were reference cards, like Gordon said, except for Asus, who actually revealed a handful of custom cards, oh. but didn't give any detailed information about them aside from pictures. Yeah, so I, may, I imagine they're making them now, right? So oh, I didn't know that. So that just mm-hmm. tells you we were just, they were dazzling us all all weekend with stuff. So, um, Oh, so I want to mention the, the power. So um, all of them have three, well, so the ports, so we might as well get into for people don't know. They have three display port 1.4s, I believe, and then a single full-size HDMI 2.0, all of them, because they're basically the same card. And which I think is interesting is for Liquid Edition has two 8 pins, the um, 64 has two 8 pins. They weren't, they were like, well, we're not sure what's on the 56. I'm going to guess it's two 8 pins because it's basically the exact same board on all of them. And, the, you know, the 56 is just has some of the CUs, you know, disabled because they're bad, probably, right? So, and did I see it right that the uh, it has the same thing like the Frontier Edition where it has the LEDs? Yes. Yeah, that, that's a cool feature. I like that. Yeah, the, the, the LED tack, and also you can change the LED colors. And the, the of course, the limited edition has a little plastic thing at the end, which is pretty cool. Um, plastic thing. One it's, LED. It's like the little cube, the R, the little R oh, cube. Okay. Yeah. Just to go back to the you know custom talk for a second. Yeah. 
This is a, I always say, hey, unless you're using a small form factor system, don't buy a reference card because those blower sire coolers are great in small form factor systems, but not much else. I think that based off the Vega Frontier Edition's performance, you might really want to wait for a custom card here because based on the Vega Frontier Edition, which is the prosumer card, the reviews on that showed that the more you can cool it and keep that down, the higher the clocks are getting it translated into real performance gains. So it'll probably be worthwhile to hold out for, you know, one of the big three fan coolers kind of a deal if you're going to get this, because I wouldn't be surprised if it would have an effect on performance to a notable degree. Yeah, I would imagine because, you know, AMD is not known for making the best reference coolers either. I mean, mm-hmm. although I think this time they, gosh, what is the word? Isometric thermal chamber, I think is what they're saying. <laughs> is what it, uh, the it's cool. still a reference cooler. Yeah, reference cooler. <laughs> it looks nice, though. You get aluminum. So, um, so uh, <clears throat> somebody's making a claim here on YouTube. Uh, Killer Tomato says right now HBM2 is garbage for mining. Uh, so... Yeah, what, what, what do you guys think about that? You think that'll be another way to, uh, <laughs> that to actually, defeat the mining craze? Yeah, I mean, maybe, but I don't think AMD did that. Because I, uh, uh, Ryan Smith over at Nantuck was same thing, saying the same thing. He was like, yeah, this is this is why Fury, no one wanted to touch Fury, right? It was just like yep. the HPMs are like, blah. In fact, he said, he said the same thing. Um, again, he's one of the smart guys in the room. He said, it's the reason why nobody wants 1080, um, 1080Ti, because the GDDR5X is worse I'm guessing it's very memory latency sensitive or something. I don't know what yep. it is, but yep, yeah, that's it. That's I don't know because it took I don't so mind. long for the 1080 to start selling out. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah that'll be interesting. I mean, if miners don't touch it, but you know, what if the hash rate is high enough to overcome the you know the power consumption and that we we don't know. I mean, AMD is not, did not release that. Um, there were lengthy lengthy discussions about the mine mining impact on gaming cards. Somebody was saying, um, Ryan again at Nantech was saying, hey, you guys ever thought about just putting a poison pill in here, just nerfing it so the performance does not is not great for miners. That way you can actually get your cards in the hands of your you know, the people you wanted to get them to. And they're like, yeah, no, we're just, they're not. <laughs> they're, they're sort of like, we don't really want to take features out of it. And then also they're like, you know, the AMD said, you know, they these these miners, they're smart. They are, they are smart and there's big money in it. So... I mean, they're doing all kinds of modifications to the cards, and basically, I don't think AMD thinks they could actually do anything to nerf uh, mining performance that the miners couldn't get around. So, at least not enough so that it would make it worth their while, is my guess. Yeah, that's but, that's why I'm really interested to see what the proportions wind up being between cards that are re- available at the actual MSRP versus the ones that have the inflated MSRP. Because I'm guess I wouldn't be surprised if AMD says, okay, 75% of the Vega cards that we put out are going to be part of that bundle pack so mm. that mm. we get more money out of it, protecting against mining, so on and so forth. But it winds up costing you a little bit more out of pocket. Did we talk about release date yet? I don't think so. Uh, no. Yeah, actually. So how uh, long is the wait? <laughs> <laughs> I know you. August know. fourteen. So, so we got two two weeks, weeks to, to actually see. find out. Um, God. And then uh, uh, Ricardo on YouTube's asking any word when the review embargo lifts. I don't actually have one. I don't know any of that info. I would guess around August fourteenth. A lot of the times, uh, the street date is the same day as the embargo date. Uh, and a really great question from Keto, uh, but can it run Crisis? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, Maybe. the little known trivia, Intel, Intel, yes, Intel Corporation said, you know what? You can run Crisis on IGP now. I was like, really? <laughs> so yeah, really, go try it. It's like, uh, okay, I, one uh, of these days. But no, I, you can run the original Crisis on IGP could, now. Could that be a YouTube series? Wait, like, I, we just take every GPU or IGP and be like, hey, can it run Crisis? Yeah, you could. <laughs> are, are we talking about, like, actual just standard IGP? Or are we talking about, like, Iris Pro? Well, they, they I mean, I, I think 
They didn't say Iris Pro or Iris Plus. They, I think they just said, yeah, you can run IGP now, which, I mean, that kind of makes sense. We're talking to like a game from, what, 2008 or something? <laughs> True. <laughs> but everybody still uh, says it, it's like, in your own crisis. Yeah, right. Is uh, it older? When it, When did it? Oh, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd have to look it up. But uh, <clears throat> we got a, I'm, so obviously this topic is bringing out a lot of the uh, people planting their flags. Uh, it seems like a lot of people on Facebook are uh, uh, NVIDIA all the way. Uh, but there's more AMD love in the uh, YouTube chat. Interesting. Um, so how how does it compare uh, to the NVIDIA cards? You know, is, do you think it's uh, too little, too late, or do you think uh, they they have an opportunity? I, I know what Brad's going to say. I'm having him do my Brad imitation. <laughs> we haven't seen a review. You have to wait for review cards. No snap judgments. <laughs> I am the voice of reason. You're correct. We need to be responsible here. Not jump to conclusions. Um. I don't know. You know, it's interesting because that really was, I will say, the the reaction from people because, you know, no one really knew what to expect out of Vega. I expected it to be between 1080, 1080 Ti performance. It seems like it's closer to 1080 unless you're getting the liquid one. I don't know how far the liquid one really gets them. Um, but, yeah, it's, I think it's a little, like, a little disappointing. Got to remember 1080 came out a year and a half ago almost. So it's a long Last way. May. So that was a question. It's like everybody, we're in the room, we're, we're in there, we're like, and somebody's like, hey, you know, you guys just now introduce a card that is as fast, maybe as fast as an NVIDIA card that came out 14 months ago. And I will, because I, I do want to give you AMD's response because I, I think it's very reasonable. They're saying, look, we, you know, they have, you know, what, three, they have three different dies going. We have one. And... If you look at the ultra high end of gaming, and you know, I know people don't really agree the definition of ultra high end, but you know, frankly, if you are spending more than two hundred and fifty dollars on a video card, you are a high ultra high end gamer, right? People do not spend that. The vast majority of people do not spend money on those high end cards. So they're saying on the high end, ultra high end, we have zero percent market share, right? Nobody's buying AMD cards that is looking at a ten seventy or a ten eighty. Vega gets us into that game that is basically you got to remember when you're looking at that high end 1080 is 90 95 percent of it and 1080 ti's maybe five percent of that high end right so we now have a part we have gone from zero to whatever we can take from nvidia is good for us right so that is their response it makes a lot of sense it is true because i mean if you're an NVIDIA fan, it's really tough. Your 580 was the top you could get, so now you really do have... I mean, if you have an AMD fan, you have a, a higher end go. They're, they're at least back in the game. I I do have some thoughts, even though I will preface it with the okay. attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to be attention. But just off the top of my head, yes, it is, to be honest, kind of disappointing if they do hang with the 1070 and the 1080 with a bigger die and more watts a year and a half later. From a technological standpoint, that is kind of disappointing, right? But it can still be a, a card worth buying, and it can still be a very interesting card, especially if you accept what they're saying. With if you bundle it with FreeSync, and you buy into the FreeSync G-Sync variable refresh rate thing, they do have an advantage there, price-wise. And uh, uh, Leslie's also saying you still don't have to uh, give them your email address to log in to get <laughs> yeah. to So there's another one. Yeah, that's that like is a, a very fine point. That is an excellent uh, point. Well made. Uh, Senator, uh, I have a rebuttal. Senator, I'm just going to say what the video people are going to say, and it's Volta. Right? Volta. Yes. I mean, it's. Do, Let do me you finish hear my it? point first. Let me finish my okay. point first. I got thoughts right. about that too. Ah, uh, what was my point? But something to Sorry. keep into consideration. This reminds me of. I've been saying this ever since CES when the architecture preview came out. And you look at it, and they're talking about high bandwidth cache and you know all this other stuff. There's, a lot of it seems focused on getting into the business and enterprise side, which really is where all the money is. And they do only have the one die, like Gordon just said. So they made Vega, and it has to address all the markets. And it still kind of feels like they spent a lot of attention on getting a foothold in those lucrative enterprise markets with Vega, with Radeon Instinct. And they're doing what they can with gaming and the value proposition on the gaming front. That's still, that was my gut feeling ever since CES, and it, it still kind of feels that way to me. Volta. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Because Volta could come, they've already showed Volta. NVIDIA's already showed Volta in the high end point. They can, everyone thinks it's coming out in quarter one, 2018. But with Pascal, when they showed, 
you know, the server Pascal chip. The GTX 1080 and 1070 came out two months later. So really, Volta could come at any point. And that's that's an even trickier part of all this. Yeah. I mean, it's just knocking at the door. You just you just hear it. Hey, hey, guys, Volta's at the door. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad this didn't come out in February, I would say. Because if this had come out, you know, right before the GTX 1070 come out, and they could say, hey, we have this value proposition. We're right there with the GTX 1080. It would have been a really positive story. But the fact that it's waited and been stretched out until midway through August, I think, kind of hurts the optics of all that or whatnot. So uh, we have somebody, uh, Hey Dan 1983. I don't think it's our Dan uh, from <laughs> home. Uh, he says, uh, something that no one can uh, that no one considers uh, is that AMD cards get faster with time. We can see a 290X now faster than a 780 Ti or a Titan and so on. Is that, is that true? Do you feel like the cards get faster over time? That's true because that tends to be true because they're all based on the graphics card next architecture as, as well as the consoles. So whatever improvements they make, like for the new cards, trickle down to all the old cards too. So they do tend to get better over time. That being said, I've always been a firm believer in buy for what's being sold to you today and don't bet on promises for the future ever coming true. Uh, said every know. FX owner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's very true. You wait. You just wait. <laughs> oh, okay. But w will Volta really be that big of a step when, when it comes, you know, like uh, the, what uh, of the information they've already put out there, does it seem like it'll be that big of a step when it comes out? Brad, <laughs> everyone's looking at me. Brad, well, uh, I mean, Brad's gonna I, say we don't know, we don't know the parts yet. We have to wait for the facts. Well, they, we uh, know it's not a die change, right? A die change? Yeah. Well, it's I a new mean, architecture. Is it so, a new architecture? And it's a move. We're, you know, some of them at least be moved to HBM two, right? So, uh, I would doubt seeing HBM two in consumer versions of Volta. I would expect it to be GDDR five X like they currently have, or GDDR six. They gotta have a high end uh, one, though, don't you think? I mean, you got to, AMD's putting these in a 399 cards. Yeah, but GDDR5X in the 11 and 12 gigabyte capacities that NVIDIA's doing hangs pretty well with these HBM things. Yeah. So, and they cost, cost much less to put in there. Uh, but as far as the improvements go, the last few generations typically, like if you move from NVIDIA generation to NVIDIA generation, what was the new 70 level card, like the GTX 1070? typically is in the ballpark of the 80 Ti card from the previous generation. So the 1070 is in the ballpark of the 980 Ti, so on and so forth. So I would expect something like that with the next generation of Volta cards. I'm curious to see whether or not NVIDIA charges more money because they've been price creeping real hard the past few generations. And if they manage to put out Volta soon, they'll be pretty close to a full generation ahead of AMD. And that might hurt everybody's wallets in the long run. Speaking of NVIDIA... Not a peep this weekend. Oh, yeah, that was a Not surprise. Not a peep. And I was really surprised by that. That may actually say more than anything, right? I mean, there's been a couple... Isn't it, hasn't AMD had a couple launches without NVIDIA usually ruining it, you know? <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah, they had the Polaris launch, and the GTX 1060 came out a little bit later. Yeah. You know, a month or two. Uh, and, I mean, do they need to say anything? They have the GTX 1080 Ti out now. They put that out there months ago, probably expecting it, this to launch months ago. So. Right. I mean, that kind of, I think that kind of speaks to um, the, the positioning power of these cards versus, you know, the very high-end 1080 Ti, arguably ultra enthusiasts, right? So, uh, but yeah, I am surprised. And then, you know, people don't know what I'm talking about. AMD, so AMD <laughs> and NVIDIA, just to give you what it's like, AMD would be like people that are arch rivals, and AMD would say, hey, we got a party, come over Saturday, we're going to have free pizza, and we're going to have beer. And be like, okay, cool, you get that invite, you say you're going to go, and then basically about an hour later, you'd be like, hey, it's NVIDIA, dude, we rent it out, you know, a mansion, we're gonna be hanging out, there's going to be a big pool, we're going to have catered food, and we'll fly you in by helicopter. I mean, just kind of like, just to stomp on your party. They just like <laughs> stomp on your party, just because that's what they typically do. So they really, they really don't like to let the, you have your good party, so. Yeah, I was just maybe expecting, not expecting, but I was wondering if we we're going to see like a price cut on the 1080 or something. 
just a, like, not even a huge one, but just something just to kind of nudge people and say like, hey. What did, what did 1080s really go for now? I mean, I was looking over the weekend. They were like 600 something so, bucks. Yeah, the, I was looking miners. this morning and the cheapest available one I could find was 650 bucks. Yeah, it's all because of the miners. They could announce a price cut and say, hey, it's 450 now. But if it's really 650, what difference does it make? All right. But with that price of you not. So a 1080 is 650 bucks and a Vega is 499. If you can get one. If you can get, well, I mean, I imagine you can get it because miners are going to want to know. Well, if it's I mean, it's just because we don't know what the bundle, non bundle split is oh. going to be like. Yeah, but you can get the base one. So for four ninety nine, dollars base card, black, plastic, shroud. Uh, what would you, I mean, if, if the performance is pretty much close, you know, dead even, they trade blows, which is some things, some things, what do you go for? Hard call. I think it's really individual, like where you live, how hot your environment is. But how, it's 150 bucks. Yeah, but I would, you get a free hate, sync panel with but that. You hate f fan noise, right? A, I yeah. have a feeling you would yeah. actually pay to avoid that fan noise. <laughs> yeah, I, although I got to say, I don't know how loud these cards are, so I. I know, but I'm just saying in theory, yeah. right? If it does just say that it's it kind of holds true to form, like previous generations where they tend to run hot and loud. Right. If I don't so, think it's 290, I don't think the Fury X was, was that bad. So well, well, that was liquid cooled. That was liquid cooled, right? So um, I don't know, but still 150 bucks. It is. I know. I can get you a free sync panel for I that. I know. <laughs> and fifty dollars more. I, again, I just really think it, it depends on personal situation, like what you hate the most and what you're willing to pay for to avoid it. Yeah. For me, if all things being considered, if they perform relatively equally and one uses twice as much power, but the other one's one hundred and fifty dollars cheaper. I would save the one hundred and fifty bucks every time because that power draw, you're going to have to use that constantly for a long time to add up to one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. True, yeah. but uh, G GTR one says uh, they should bundle every Vega with an AC unit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can get a wall unit for like how much? <laughs> we know. I mean, we know the TDPs look scary, but I don't. I'm to me, it's the noise. Like if it's maybe it's not that bad. Who knows? Well, I mean, you saw <clears throat> you saw them. I mean, uh, performing uh, were they loud? Can you even talk about that? Yeah, I, I I couldn't even tell how loud they were. It's just oh, yeah. too, too many it's, nerds it's in one room to talking. Tell at conferences. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. No, okay. you cannot get, get a wall AC unit for one hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, you can. No, I'm looking at Home Depot right now. You're not now. looking at the right place. <laughs> okay, I'll go to Walmart. Yeah, you, Gordon can find you a, a cardboard box with a power supply in it uh, for ten bucks. So. He's gonna sell me a cardboard box with ice cubes and a, like a regular <laughs> a fan. fan. <laughs> you know that would. So you know what? Oh man, I just I don't want to. to to take us off the rails, but <laughs> there late. was a case vendor, and it was I can't remember who made it, but it was just, it wasn't huge. But there, what they did was they 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 basically built a, a, a you know a, a face change unit into the front of it, the lower corner, and then they had a fan. And what it would do is it would cool the air and blow it into the PC to keep it cool. <laughs> and it wasn't like blowing it directly onto the CPU or anything. It was just like it was just a tech, you know, PLTA just kind of blowing cold air into the system. Yes. So that was a AC unit almost in here. Walmart does sell one for two seventy. See, <laughs> that's still more than one hundred fifty dollars. How many mm -hmm. BTUs? Don't know, yeah, but okay. I think a ten thousand. There you go. See, that's pretty big. Kay. I have like a five thousand BTU unit. I got a, like fries somewhere, but yeah, that's uh, the kind of thing you buy with your other guy friends. Drunk. Got a hot tip on uh, YouTube. Uh, Sheik is saying Vega Vegas limited edition ones are going to run very cool. Uh, if it defeats GTX 1080 and most of the benchmarks, then it's going to be a bang up card. Uh, do we know anything about benchmarks? Did they talk anything about that? Um, where is this? I, I think there was a slide. Oh, no way. I've already moved on to the next topic. I see. I knew everybody would want to talk to Vegas. Just everybody. So let me find the. Uh, where is the. Uh, where's Bra Rogers Brady. I know on the website they compare it against the Fury X in uh, Battlefield, I believe it is. Maybe a couple other games. And it's 30 ish percent better than the Fury X. But that's using the DirectX 12 renderer, which is garbage, and I don't know why they're using it anyway. And well, then uh, Brady Arrow Moss says, uh, at their event, Linus uh, let some people play Doom on Vega. So, uh, But I mean, we've seen that before. They showed that even at CES. Right, and they have that Vulcan advantage. Some Doom. people, you know. Doom is not just a Vulcan advantage. They have specific, they built specifically things in to run better on AMD hardware as well. I forget the name of it, but there's a technology that AMD supports that Doom built in support for so that's really like you shouldn't use that 
for comparisons very well, much. Well, so let's go. Um, so the numbers they did give us, which um, are presented in an interesting fashion. Uh, I don't think I could. Um, I, I, you wouldn't be able to see it if I held it up. Uh, Gears of War. This is playing on a 1440p ultra wide panel. So about I think I think I was looking at about five megapixels. No, wait, this can't be right. This is 1080p, I think. No, that can't be right. What the hell is this? I would expect it to get better as the resolution scales up, just like Fury, though. Oh, yeah. So this is playing. So playing on a, a 1440p panel, um, basically, so they're giving a range of the uh, radi air-cooled uh, Radeon RX Vega 64, 76 frames a second. Low end is 53 compared to a GTX 1080. 78 versus 45 um and then yeah, interestingly also throwing a, a 980 ti which is 57 to 34 um and then a, a fury x which i don't even know why you would count because only six people on the planet were able to buy them <laughs> 58 to 42 and then for actual i'm gonna guess this is that same panel 1440p a in doom uh they're saying the uh, vega 64 would push 76 frames a second and they're saying a 1080 would push maybe 78, you know, average. And then um, Forza, they get 61, 1080 gets 51, Gears of War, 53, uh, 1080, 59. And then 58 in Battlefield 1 for them, 57 for 1080, Ashes of Singularity, which is 60 for them, 63 for 1080. So, so you should always take some vendor supplied right. performance numbers with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't doubt that. Hey, Listen to my attorney right that, here. I saw that. But no, what I'm pointing out about this one in particular is I don't doubt that those numbers are accurate. Right. But notice that they're all DirectX 12, which puts AMD's best foot forward. <laughs> right. Uh, Benny Biggins on YouTube uh, says uh, all this talk about graphics cards and CPUs is why he uses a Mac. <laughs> and then, my condolences and then somebody said uh <laughs> where to say they said uh well oh uh world of al says hey new max use amd <laughs> wait 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 so i know he's just trolling us but i don't know if he's just being sarcastic because he's being sarcastic okay well i don't know yeah you well because i was thinking because i like a mac user was like i don't want to have to worry about getting new stuff that's why i use a mac <laughs> <laughs> well jonathan says uh wait there's no touchscreen macbook is, is what you're using a fake uh this is the uh oh, prototype macbook air 14. nobody's <laughs> seen it yet there's embargoes all over this and i'm using it I'm just going to say, touch screen. compare the actual logos, and then you'll figure it yeah. out. No, yeah, see, it's convertible. Yeah, if you're going to get mad at anyone, get mad at uh, Elena. She it's, she is actually using, using a Mac. Yeah, <laughs> it's convertible. I have to know all the things. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, comparable. But back to your performance question, comparable, right? I mean, but it's $150 less if they're not, if these numbers actually prove out. Compared to actual until street, the right? mining craze ends, until the mining craze ruins everything, right? So <laughs> I love I love the optimism and then the pessimism. Really <laughs> well, I gotta say, like, cause that I mean, really, that's the reason I, I was so confused. I was like, I don't understand these packs. How does this How does this stop miners from buying it? And everybody in the room was like, well, cause cause it's you know because it's the pack you get you get the two games it's a hundred dollars more expensive it's like wait so somebody making standing to make I don't know thirty five thousand dollars in mining a month is going to care about paying an extra hundred dollars more for the two games. You know, I, I don't, to me, it's like, it's not really going to stop anybody. Miners are going to buy it. If this card is awesome in mining, you, the only time you're ever going to see it is the one we get for directly from AMD because you're never <laughs> going to see another one. So, uh, yeah, I'm very pessimistic about that. So, all right. All right. Anything else we want to cover for Vega or should oh, we move on? God, we got to so There's nothing go for on. the next one. We got to move on to the next. Nobody's going to We've been, we spent a that. long time on this already. Vega's hot. Vega, I mean, I'm yeah. not saying it's mm -hmm. not. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just wondering if John's actually <laughs> messaging us on Facebook asking us where he, we are. He took it down. It's <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my last topic, my last thing I want to say on Vega is go to the R A and B subreddit and read it. It's amusing. Really? What's it like? Uh, it's very pitched battles right now some people that's still saying it's good some people saying are disappointed they're gonna... yeah there are there's a lot of flame wars going on over there right now lots of uh roars of fury and tears mm -hmm. of joy yeah mm -hmm. I, yeah i mean yeah i understand people are going to be you know they wanted you know when you you have a, 
a, a team that you support, you always want to win, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like they're going to, but at the same time, to their point, it's like, look, we, we got in the NBA finals last time. We weren't around the court, right? It was like a hundred to like five. So we're at least in the running. We got a chance. Maybe at least they deserve the right to be on the court now. So I mean, just remember that. And they still could very well have a good value proposition. After all this, I'll saying, yeah, it's only the 1080 or 1070, but they can deliver a good and you believe in the free sync thing, which is free sync is awesome. They still could have a very good selling point on that front. Yeah. All right. So we're going to this is the funny thing, because I thought this would be the thing that people cared about this weekend. No, not at all. <laughs> really? Not even. No one. I Well, not I mean, they got the, the, the excitement over. We're going to move on to the next one. Can you click it? Click, click, click. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. We have officially moved to Threadripper. To Threadripper. Now, the news, I, I'll bring I'll bring us up to date on this. If I can actually find my information, I've got to use my That's brain. a nice picture you took, Gordon. Oh, which one? The um... uh, packaging. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now it's going to be everywhere on the internet without your credit. <laughs> Just, I kind of feel like at least give me credit if you're going to steal mm -hmm. my photos. <laughs> I mean, there are people using my like background on their website for the entire landing page. It's like you should at least <laughs> give me credit, but um, it's a good photo. Hey, IDG owns it too; they could sue you. I won't. Oh, so the big news for Threadripper CPU fans, Mac people, you can tune out now. Actually, you could tune out about an hour ago. <laughs> uh, is of course an eight-core Threadripper uh, Ryzen official name Ryzen Threadripper 1900X, eight cores, sixteen threads. 3.8 gigahertz uh, base clock, 4 gigahertz on boost, and I'm going to guess with the uh, Sensimi XFR 4.2 right on a single core load um, for $549. <laughs> so here comes the Bill Clinton. I, I, I've got that one Hi, down. Um, and of course, oh my God, that's so cheap. That's so cheap. It is a cheap. I know, because you look at, look, 16 cores, 999 for the 1950X. The second third ripper, twelve cores, seven ninety nine, and this one now we're looking five forty nine, which is a little bit more money than eighteen hundred X when it came out first. Well, Ruru two is asking, what's the point? Uh, there's already three Ryzen seven eight cores. Yes, and that is actually so. The, I want to speak to that because I think a lot of people don't understand because there there are yeah there's eight core Ryzen seven. Why would I want another eight core chip that costs more money that has the same core count? And, and this is this was my in Ryzen 7 Ryzen 5 I think are fantastic CPUs for the money you are getting so much value so the core count is awesome but the chipset is very consumer right there's a reason why it's on you know x370 which is very much like z270 it's a consumer grade chipset you get uh, by what 16 uh, you get by 16 gen 3. And then you get a little bit to the south bridge, and that's it. You plug in a GPU. If you plug in your, um, if you plug in your your buy for PCIe SSD, that's super duper fast. Your GPU will kick back to buy eight mode. This is really not going to affect ninety nine percent of people and ninety ninety nine percent of applications. But a lot of people just don't want to run their video card at buy eight when it's a full buy sixteen card. And the thing is, like, hey, what if you want to run two? you know, buy four super fast PCIe drives plugged directly into the slots. Well, on the Z270 and a X or X370. Z270 and X370, you're going to make a lot of compromises. Um, so this, I, I think, and I predicted this, this is why I want to bring it up because I said I could perfectly see them. I, I, I expected them to do an eight core version in, in the, in the TR4 socket thread ripper, because this gives you access to a big, you know, the, the, the heavy duty, this is like a commercial grade socket, right? You're getting 64 lanes of PCIe. So you can run all that stuff that you want, which is the big thing that chat's going over the, right. Uh, so you can get your 64 lanes of PCIe. You can plug in all your M.2 devices, all your GPUs, all the crazy stuff you want and still get, you know, have plenty of PCIe lanes left. And if you can't afford a thousand dollars, 16 core, 1950X, or you just don't need it, but you just want access to eight cores in a heavy duty chipset, this is the chip for you. I mean, on paper, I haven't so, tested it. So Matthew says it's fair to say it's like an 1800X, but with quad channel memory, but uh, how much difference will quad channel, channel memory make? Um, so I, you know, they actually didn't say how exactly it's made, but I believe it's two, again, 
um, just like 1950X, 1920X, it's it's two eight core dies, probably with you know four four disable on each, uh, memory controls in both dies. I don't I don't know how much the memory bandwidth will help. Um, it, some things, yes. I mean, some things that are very much uh, memory bandwidth um, sensitive. Uh, of course, Ryzen is is also interesting too because uh, Ryzen is very sensitive to high bandwidth, right? Because the Infinity Fabric basically runs at the same speed as, as your memory. So you can get um, help out of that. Um, I don't know. I think mostly it's because, again, if you are a content creator, you, you I mean, the reality is the future is not about SATA. It's about M.2 and U.2 and plugging in on all these PCIe NVMe drives. That is going to hurt on X370. That is going to hurt on Z270. If you're doing real stuff, if you're a typical consumer, perfectly fine. But this is... Um, I'm not. I don't want to make. So the chipset for uh, X370 is is like a Ford Ranger, and this is like an F350 Super Duty. So it's a real <laughs> commercial grade truck. So that's the it, that's the big plus. It's also worth noting that the base clock speed of the Threadripper version is actually a few megahertz higher. So you should see more performance just out of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and three eight versus yeah. I mean, but there's there's a cost. I don't think you're going to get a Threadripper board for the same price you're gonna there is no b350 option right you're gonna be like yeah, yeah. i'm gonna get a 65 dollars cpu for my eight core ryzen 7 which you can do but if you're <laughs> buying something like this but, it's uh, what you were saying earlier you're not gonna really sweat that as much because you know what you're getting yourself into right it's not for everybody but it's an option so i i actually applaud them for this i know people are scratching their heads intel what would the intel version of this be the intel version of this is hey KB Lake 7700K. Oh, KB yeah. KB Lake X. You need more than this? Well, I know. I don't even understand that. But, I mean, you need more than this? We're going to move you. If you want 8-core eight eight core count, 1000 bucks. you know, X99. Well, I, what I was trying to get at is just that this makes a heck of a lot more sense to me than KB Lake X does. <laughs> I was going to bring that up. I'm just saying. <laughs> Somebody who follows me on Twitter said, so this is kind of like the reverse 70, uh, 77. 40k or whatever the core i5 kb lake smart like if you buy that it disables pcie lanes and you can only use half the board features whereas this it's like it's actually a good reason to buy into the platform with the eight core chip yeah well but uh jeffrey uh on youtube saying uh x399 boards are 100 to 300 more than x370 so the, it's an extra cost right yes and again uh an f350 super duty costs more than a ford ranger because <laughs> when you are hauling your boat up that hill to lake tahoe <laughs> which is a big hill for people who don't understand california a little more than hill you're going to do a little better with your f350 truck than a than a ford ranger with a four cylinder and <laughs> not, i'm not talking about the cpu itself i'm talking about the chipset everything around it you know i mean it's just sort of the, the entire platform you're looking at the whole platform one is perfectly fine for 90 percent of consumers now the one is made for heavy duty usage so know what you're getting into you don't you don't need f350 don't buy it i i think it makes sense to me but is this supposed to overclock better than the 1800x mm. <laughs> do we know anything <laughs> Uh, he can out answer that question. <laughs> I will say there was a there was a demonstration. I was just uh, saying I happened to scan through your article and there was a mention of overclocking. Yes, there was a. Okay. So I was that's what I was referring oh, to. Okay. I'm, not I, trying, I'm not trying, trying to, to get, get <laughs> too trouble. I will say this: so they did a demo. They did overclocking of uh, 1950x on liquid nitrogen, which we all do for fun on the weekend. Uh, and they got like what 5.187 gigahertz out of it and a 41 something 4200 cinebench r15 score on all cores um which is crazy i think and it's funny i i you know yeah so definitely it overclocks well um and you know the the reason they did that demo i i kind of want to bring up is is i think they just want to throw shade they i just i gotta say so you have basically the graphics group and then you have the cpu group and the graphics group, you could see that, yeah, they know they're still coming back, right? They're they're not the ground is not quite as solid, but the C they were so much swagger, so much <laughs> swagger out of the CPU side. I mean, they were just throwing shade all day. I mean, just like, <laughs> I mean, there's this one slide where they were like, uh, I I think I put the quote, you know, Jim Anderson, he was saying like, 
you know, Ryzen Threadripper is so good. We're giving you value before it even comes out because Intel's already cut the price of its 10 core <laughs> from $1,700 to $1,000, right? So we're helping you out. It's not even out yet. <laughs> it's like they're just like, yeah, and the whole thing, the whole overclocking demo where they're, you know, they get that scored. And the reason why is because at Computex, Intel did a 10 core Skylake X overclock and they, they set a record for that for, you know, whatever. And then this is like, yeah, look, we're better than you and we're the same price. So. So much just, just the swagger is very interesting, I think. So, <laughs> all right, I, Brad, uh, Brad, you wanted to say something, right? Sorry, I think it's a pretty interesting counter to the eight core, I don't know the number offhand, core i7 chip that Intel just put out, actually. 7820X, I think. Yeah, their, uh, you know, high end desktop chips are made to be high end desktop chips so for consumer uh, content creators. They're made, they have. Well, until this year, they had more PCIe lanes and stuff like that, I guess. Um, this is the first year, I guess, they have fewer PCIe lanes in the 8-core chip. But this is, you know, saying, hey, you have your 8-core chip for content creation stuff. We also do now, and we're getting rid of the one drawback that we had for our 8-core chip, the Ryzen 7, is that you didn't have PCIe lanes and quad-core memory. So we can do that, too. I think it's a pretty effective counter, and it's 50 bucks cheaper. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, I mean, that came up, too, because, I mean, everybody was, you know, the PCIe lane discussion, you know, like, and somebody asked, they asked, they asked, they asked so what do you, what's, what are you going to do? Why do you need 64 PCIe lanes? And <laughs> I was like, well, the perfect example is like, that's, you know, I just got a thread for I have 64 PCIe lanes. And then you go to your friend and you go like, oh, you just got a 7820X. How many PCIe lanes do you have, right? <laughs> 28? You know, that is the reason there is certainly... People with their really nice objects that they like to show off. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah. Is there really a use for normal people? Adam, maybe, because he's a content creator. He does all the video stuff and he needs all the storage. For most of us, yeah, you don't need 64 PCIe lanes. But it's, you know, you also don't need a V10 engine or, you know, or a, a motorcycle that will go 230 miles an hour. Or but, unlimited data. Or unlimited data, <laughs> yes. I mean, that's the dumbest thing, right? I mean, my mom always tells me how she she can't wait to get a real big truck, uh, only because during the holidays she wants to be able to put the whole family uh, in when they're in the holidays. And I'm like, what about the rest of the year? And she's like, yeah, well, don't don't worry, I, it's fine. It's just just for the holidays. She's gonna rent it out. Yeah. She's gonna put it on I one guess, of those apps so know. that people can use it. She's gonna get one of those shuttles. <laughs> <laughs> um, Beyond the cheap uh, thread ripper. I thought it was interesting that they did confirm that there will be a water cooling bracket in there, like we were talking about on Friday. Oh right, yes. Actually, I can't. I should. I so I uh, clearly there are things I cannot talk about. Things I can't talk about. I'm looking at the actually slide. I can't talk about. Uh, so the box, which if you go to the website, uh, you'll see it's it's. We talked about it last time the cool ass box inside did that you, box. Did you touch it? I did talk, talk, touch the box. I even have a picture. Hey, God, for I wish our I had... audio listeners, what does that box look like? Yeah. Ooh, good. I don't know. It? I mean, honestly, it looks like a, <laughs> it looks like a cute packaging for like a, a Pokemon like... thing almost. Oh, in the <laughs> so back yeah, of it. What it... does that say, Elena? On the back of the box. Unlock the power. Unlock mm. the power. Okay, let's talk about the box. Things I learned about the box. Uh, first, prepare to be disappointed. No lights. No LEDs. And of course, I was like, "What? How could? Why no LEDs, man? You guys." They're like, yeah, no RGB, no RGB. And clearly they said, we looked at it. Believe us. That was like totally like everybody wanted to do it. But the minute you put a battery into a box, oh my God, you know, the regulations and the paperwork yep. and dealing with, you know, basically a sense. battery, which is not exactly C4, but you know, it's, it's enough that it, uh, if it's on a plane, it can still uh, blow up. Yeah. So it's just enough that it's like, no, it's, they just could not do it. So I, um, it's a bummer. There's no, there's no, it doesn't light up inside the box. You do get a bracket as Brad mentioned. It fits Asa tech coolers, which is essentially the United States, 99% of most coolers. So, uh, can you confirm, uh, Oni's asking, uh, is Raja's head included in every box? Yes or no? Sounds kind of morbid. Raja's <laughs> head is not. And you know, it's funny cause everybody did that. I did that too. I I'm looking, I took a picture of the box. It's a, it. So if you're looking at this video, the box is about the size of my head. Oh, That's it's that large. It yeah. It does not look that way. <laughs> in the video. No, I mean in the picture here, it just looks like it's much smaller. All right. I'm going to show you. Let me pull up the picture. That was Let's not a comment can. on your uh -huh, actual uh -huh. physical. <laughs> 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 um, 
Uh, let's find the box. All right, I'm going to find the box picture. I'm going to get reported to HR, y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, look at this. Oh, well, maybe that's the perspective, though. Let me see. I'm going to show this to you on my Mac. Did you make a duck face in that photo? Look at that. Uh, Gordon. Oh, oh, oh touchscreen. This, this MacBook Man, is really. Mac OS. All right, see that? Can you see it? That is. So I'm, for pro. audio listeners, I am holding up my um, MacBook uh, Air 14 prototype. That is. Uh, but I, look at see. Brad, can you see? I'm going to show it to Brad. Making can you see Brad? Face. Dang. Wow. This. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. So you can see it, Brad. It does look <laughs> yeah. like the size of your head. It is a, it is a very Plus large shoulder. box. But uh, it's bigger than your head, it looks like. I think that might be the perspective. <laughs> it's actually pretty big. It is a honking big box, isn't it? Holy um, moly. So uh, inside the box, though, you get the, you get the bracket because they. Um, uh, AMD did say there will there'll be, I think, 20 water coolers you can buy um, at launch and I think four or five different air coolers. But they realized people have existing uh, water coolers. You want to convert them. Um, and they're, so they included the bracket. They figured that was the easiest way to get that into your hands. And there is one other thing that is in there. There is a torque Torx wrench. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, w basically, uh, if you see a Threadripper socket, uh, I think MSI actually released a video. Uh, although it was a it was a undisclosed you know YouTube video, but when I looked at it on Saturday, it had like seventy thousand views on it already. So <laughs> their socket does not have the usual levers we're used to with everything we've seen, like a you know an LGA twenty eleven V three. There's two little arms you throw up and you open the socket up. There's actually Torx heads on the. On the socket, and hmm. I'm pretty sure I can talk about this. Uh, I saw the video on YouTube this morning, and it's not hidden or anything. Oh, it's not so. hidden anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I saw it. I clicked the link, and it was there. <laughs> and it yeah, it was. It was had seventy thousand views, and it was a, you know one of those private videos. But so you basically uh, unscrew three Torx head screws, um, and then you take the CPU and you you put it in the socket, you slide it down, and then you shut it. And then you use this torque wrench. It's a torque wrench with a Torx head. And then it, it properly applies the amount of torque to that socket. And they are including that with the CPU, probably because they don't want to make motherboard vendors eat it, right? Because, I mean, otherwise the motherboard vendors would have to eat an expense. So, or also motherboard vendors would find a way to buy it cheaper and then have the wrong torque specs. Uh, so they're including that with the CPU. So you get the tool to install the CPU properly. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh. real quick, don't make me ban hammer you, Liam. Uh, so keep it cool. Uh, and then, uh, Ricardo's asking, uh, what's with the packaging? Is that really necessary? I mean, uh, it's a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars CPU. It is actually necessary. Is that <laughs> actually going to come with every retail? Yes, that is a, this, this is a PIB. This is a processor in box that will <laughs> actually be. Is it? Yeah, I'm, I I hear you. You know, I was just uh, shopping at Whole Foods with my hemp shopping bag. I'm like, I I don't I bring my own bags. Actually, I'm not kidding. My wife makes him do this. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. For people who don't like packaging, yeah, there is. It's not green, but it does give you premium. But I will say this packaging is recyclable. So it is all. Oh, that's nice. It all it is all recyclable. So um, it's not like they made it out of I don't know like. Uh, dead puppies or something like that so it looks like the size of a 13 inch black and white tv i think that may be their perspective it's okay it's about the size of it oh that would be For an awesome old mod. enough to actually remember though so you know the thing that is to put like a little screen inside of that that would be neat um turn into a fishbowl when you're done <laughs> Yeah, it is a very big box. I, I like it. And the, yeah, is, I, that, is that foam? Is my question. I've wondered that since I've seen the first picture. Is that foam? The black part? Because yeah, it looks like styrofoam. It's like a styrofoam, but it's a recyclable kind of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. And then um, I actually had a, a picture of the outside. It has the you know the sticker it tells you the model number and all that. And you can you can see the CP through it. It's curved, so it is really really hard to take pictures of. There's just immense amounts of reflections. But um, that will be every single Ryzen Threadripper CPU that I know of. And I don't know if there will be an OEM version or not you know like tray version but probably not at that price point so we uh we talked a lot about threadripper so far but we haven't talked about what i consider one of the biggest announcements from the weekend when can you actually buy these things 
Oh, let me see. Let me make sure I can tell you this. <laughs> so okay. here. it's right here. Oh, it's in the story. I don't remember. You put it in the story. Already. Well, I, real quick, I, I do I like the you. comment that Ruru2 says, uh, your cat will love the box once you've taken the processor out. So <laughs> Better the box than my hand. Better there Elena's cat. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find out what happens to Elena's hand, I'm not kidding. Look up Scary Movie 2 cat fight. <laughs> Elena did not win this fight either. No. Oh, wait, we didn't talk about any performance stuff. Do we want to talk about more performance stuff? But wait, let's get the price. Let's get the price. Here. And we can buy. Right here. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, 16 core part, August 10th. Uh, also 12 core part, August 10th. And the 8 core 1900X, August 31st is when they will all hit the shelves. So less than two weeks away. It's coming right up. Man. Um, and I do want to mention the performance we should just because, I mean, clearly they were like, there was... There was a lot of there was a lot of strutting on that stage, so we should bring it up. Uh, 1950x 999 versus a Core i9 7900x 16 core versus 10 core. Pavre multi-threaded uh, Ryzen 31 31 uh, percent. Premier Pro uh, Ryzen 14 percent. I should say Threadripper. That's what we're all calling it. Uh, handbrake 21 um, percent faster. 7-Zip Benchmark, 27% faster. Veracrypt, 55% faster. Hmm. And then Cinebench, of course, which we've seen, 11%. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That is the $200 cheaper part, the Threadripper 1920X. The 12-core part, 800 versus the $1,000 Skylake X is 11% faster. The actual performance of the 7900X, I think, is like closer to 50% or something like that. Oh, 38%. So... <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, <clears throat> at least according to Samsonite Dove, he says you can uh, pre-order Threadripper today. Oh, yeah. Pre-order, and then they'll be on shelves if you want to go in and pick up the box. <laughs> nice. So, All yeah. Right. There's, any no, stuff. there's no taking that home on a bus uh, with any discretion. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless you have a big-ass backpack. Or, or some sort of cool case to put it in, wheel it around. You or know? maybe that's so they prevent shoplifting. You can't shoplift that. <laughs> You're running out of micro center with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we, hey, so that's our topics for today, but do we, and I think we're we're almost near, almost out of time. Do we have any questions we want to clear? Any debates? Any just, or people just kind of fighting? Uh, Red and Green Isle still fighting in there? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Order in the court! I love, let's. Let, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. If you have any, we're just gonna take one or two quick questions. Uh, put it in the chat right now. We'll have these guys answer for you if there's anything burning. Uh, I found it interesting reading Gordon's article. Right at the very end, it mentions that the A Core's Kalik X chip is supposed to be six hundred bucks, but it's actually selling for six eighty on the street. Yeah. So I find that interesting. After the rumors that they pulled it in quickly to counter this kind of a deal, I wonder if they have uh, limited stocks on the Skylake Kicks at this point. Yeah, it's got to be. There's just not much out there, so they're keeping the prices up to throttle demand, right? That's my guess. Mm -hmm. Did you happen know. to see if that's third-party sellers or actually like direct from like Newegg or Amazon? Or I was kind of looking around, and it's just the prices are inflated. They actually kind of like oh, interesting. Yeah, so um, it is it is way more than I expected, but it is a fairly new launch. So, <clears throat> all right, couple uh, some rapid fire ones. Uh, DF, do you think AMD will ever match Intel on single core? I uh, that's hard to say. I mean, it, it all depends. You know how they do. We got Zen 3, Zen 2 coming. Intel's got its own stuff coming. I, I don't know. Too hard to predict. Um, it depends on how much of a fire Intel has lit under itself, um, considering the situation it seems to be in right now. So, All right. Uh, KT Cool asks, uh, will there be an X399 motherboard shortage? Too hard to predict, but I think AMD learned a lot with Ryzen 7 launch. So I'm going to guess. Mm -hmm. Also, this is not a cheap CPU. It's a thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. I think if you buy it, you should not have a problem. All right, uh, E Lopez, any plans for AMD Ryzen laptops? Yes, fourth quarter of this year. I think they're on the roadmap. Those. I think be, it's this quarter. Is it this quarter? Yeah. Yeah, I guess before they want to get in well before. Back to school, Christmas, holidays. and back to school, holidays, everything. So yes, quad core, Vega, right? Vega cores yep. in the. So that will yep. be, that will actually be interesting because you know honestly, seventy five percent of PCs sold today are laptops. If Raven Ridge is a success, they are going to put yet another another dent into Intel. So and that is a very very important servers, laptops, way more important to Intel than desktops. So. <laughs> 
Uh, Rafaz uh, is asking, uh, what happened to the rumors about Threadripper coming with closed loop cooling? Wrong. Just like the people who said that there were uh, four eight core chips, four eight core dies under Threadripper, not true. For people who doubted me, of course, I said this was true based on a unnamed source, and they publicly said Jim Anderson, I believe, said it. It, those are two. Those are two blanks, spacers, or shims. I they call them blanks. I call them shims or spacers. So, don't believe every rumor you read on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and at uh, least I said mine was from an unnamed source. <laughs> uh, we kind of covered this uh, a little bit earlier, but uh, let's reiterate: uh, Mastermind eight sixty nine. Any word on AIB partners for Vega? Um, I know that at least Asus has already showed uh, custom cards. Sapphire has announced reference style cards. Uh, MSI has announced reference style cards. I believe Gigabyte has. I know HIS has. I, I would expect all the people who you would normally expect to be putting out Radeon cards will be putting out these Radeon cards too. So, Brad, typically, because they, they did it last time, they did reference cards. How long does it take between custom cards, custom board designs, and, and the reference? Typically. I mean, on all, just in general. Um, it varies with uh, Polaris. It took a little while. Polaris, it took a month, month and a half. Um, they took the completely opposite approach with the Fury, the predecessors to Vega. Um, the Fury X was only ever really, you know, reference versions, but the Fury itself never had a reference version and only ever came out in custom cards. So it varies from situation to situation. I wouldn't expect them on day one. <laughs> So uh, along the same line, uh, Jacques asking, uh, will there be X399 boards on August 10th and for what price? I don't know if I can say what the price is, but it is, uh, let me just say they are enthusiast parts. And I'm going to imagine these will be enthusiast priced, similar to what you probably see with uh, Z270 and uh, X, gosh, I forgot, 299. X299. Right? Yeah, it's been so long. Steve over at Gamers Nexus, if you check out their YouTube video, he actually has a video up of uh, six different uh, X399 boards that you can be around launch. Yeah, they'll be there. I don't know if everybody said disclose pricing yet, but do not do not expect uh, a $95 motherboard. No. Uh, Samson, I dove asked, uh, this is a bit, bit premature, but what the pan what is the panel's guesses on what we'll see in Raven Ridge? Uh, quad core, Vega. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, these these will not. I'm going to guess with all that, maybe so they'll be attacking 35 watt um, H parts. So not dual core thin and lights like this uh, laptop, um, but you know, like a gigabyte uh, Aero 15 that style. Like your fifth, like your 15 inch, 17. 15 inch, inch basically all the that's that replacement. XPS 15 probably. I'm going to guess. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of class of laptop, but not ultrabook the kind of class. Uh, Liam is asking, will we ever be able to install Windows 7 on a Ryzen CPU? You can do it now. You just can't get any updates. <laughs> <laughs> do you get the security updates or no? They, they totally, no, they, they, say, they say, hey, this is unsupported hardware. You get a warning. Wow. Harsh. Yeah. I have thoughts about Windows 10. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> Hashtag thanks Microsoft, but also yes. compliant partners. So. Uh, Five Basher is asking, will the glue on Threadripper be user replaceable? Yes, actually. <laughs> Elmer's is a selling enthusiast class glue. Um, <laughs> they actually made a reference to that, too, because, you know, they, they, they thought it was a put down. I and mean, a lot of the Internet thinks the whole glue thing is a put down. But I will say, uh, and I'm, I'm quoting Ian Cutrus uh, at Nantech, super smart dude. And he's like, you know, look, to us, to if you're like to me and you, yeah, El to me, glue means Elmer's glue, super glue, right? And it's like, oh, you're just joking. To a chip designer, glue is a fabric, right? So that's how you connect chips. They use, they call it glue or fabric or something. So it is actually to a chip designer, uh, not a, he's saying it, it's not necessarily a put down because that is what chip designers, how they refer to uh, it. That's, that's a generous interpretation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they call them glued together chips, is what they were called, <laughs> I believe, in the Intel slide. So. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but it is true, right? I mean, glue is a, is a technical, right? That's how they talk to it. Well, John Beckham is asking, uh, how long do you expect the glue to last? Are you? I, I know we're just kidding, right? So, no, that he's, it seems oh. like it's a legitimate question. Oh, no, no. So they, they, that was so. It is an, It is a high speed fabric connecting the chips together. It is not glue, but they are <laughs> multi chip modules, right? So you have two chips connecting 
Um, some people call that glued together. Intel's done this in the past. AMD's done this in the past. So it's, you know, hey, not glue. It's not glue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last question. Thank you, everyone, in the comments. Uh, really appreciate it. Great episode. Uh, e Lopez 580 can you bring back Mr. Sound Blaster? That would be cool, right? Yeah, I'd, uh, I got. I'd, I'd like to t- chat with him. I got the card. I, I haven't. I just just way too much stuff happening. I do want to review it. Um, so I like lights, but uh, <laughs> bling yeah. bling bling bling. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, I I really PC audio. I think it really it has to go forward. And it, it, there is there's a lot of stuff happening. Valve's doing a lot of stuff, so I think it's a good topic. God, there's I still want to talk about cases too. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. And one. man, the Windows 10 keys uh, was a real hot topic. Yeah. Yes, that last, is totally. We week. need to just. We're gonna. Everybody's gonna do homework on that, and we're gonna <laughs> talk about that whether it's good Brad's, or bad. To Brad's do gonna that. have to defend his stance. Yeah, I mean, I th- you know, I mean, that seems to be the. It's got to be a good research article, right? You know, we'll put a find the the cheapest, most reliable uh, Windows 10 keys for your builds. Yeah, people get real passionate about yeah. gray market stuff too. Yeah. I was seeing some of the comments on that. Yeah. Yeah. What I do is there is a new egg of the warehouse and I used to work there and I have the access key. <laughs> they never got deactivated. So I go in the back at night about one to two is when they switch the security guards and I just like grab a whole bunch and run out. That's the cheapest way to do it. Totally and legit. That's, and that's totally why legit. Threadripper has such a big box. Yeah. <laughs> totally legit. Yeah, I know. You couldn't even physically steal more than three Threadrippers. <laughs> I got it. I can only carry three. Run, run, run. <laughs> you have to actually break that out of the box to effectively, to steal it efficiently, rather. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be just the worst, though? <laughs> if you get your, I, I have not unboxed thread, Threadripper. I don't think anybody has, but like if you open it up and it's Brad, Brad is going to know what I'm talking about. Anybody with kids, everything's going to be have those, those little anti, you know, shop shoplifting things like so everything is like fastened down it's like i can't get this damn cpu out of here getting like wire cutters to cut it out because it's just like blister packs i can't i can't get the the torque wrench it's stuck you know we'll you guys will realize this when you have kids that is just the worst thing ever is opening toys so (laughs) zip ties and tape are your enemy nice yeah you need a blowtorch (laughs) all right cool let's wrap it up i'm hungry all right okay uh, i'm gonna take us out if i can find my notes which i don't know where they are no, we're not bad. I think we did about an hour, right? So we're right on the we're uh, right on the more dogs. like an hour Almost. twenty. Really? Yeah. yeah. So much for <laughs> short, and we're gonna get yelled at now. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Okay, check back in two weeks for your fix of PC talk. Actually, we don't even know. Maybe we'll do it next week. No. So probably, I'm gonna say this: check back in the future for your <laughs> fix of go. PC talk on the full nerd. <laughs> for audio listeners, subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And if you're on YouTube, uh, I think it's over here, right? Over. Yes. Down, click yep. click right here to subscribe. Side. Yep. I'm not pointing at Elena's <laughs> MacBook. It's right down over there. <laughs> click on that. Uh, and. Send questions or comments to the full nerd at PC World. Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Ung with co-host Brad Charkas. Adios. Eleni. Bye, everyone. And Adam Patrick Murray will take us out. See ya. Have a good weekend. Oh, week. <laughs> Why are we talking? We're not supposed to talk over the...